Welcome to worship. My name is Laura Bevenauer, pastor of St. Peter's United Church of Christ, and it's the third week of Easter. This isn't what I expected, and I'll be honest, our welcome this week is going to be a teeny bit longer than usual, and that's because it's the third week of Easter, and I didn't get to do Easter in the same way that I thought I would this year. I experienced a pulmonary embolism just before Palm Sunday, and I didn't get to do any of Holy Week. I never thought that Easter could get more strange than 2020 when the pandemic shut us down, but 2021 got really weird. You, St. Peter's, in all of your forms, stepped up and took over all of Holy Week while I rested and recuperated. I'm really not at 100%, and so I'm coming to you seated. It's what I can do right now. You can probably hear my dog walking around. She needs to make sure that I'm okay. And I'm coming to you from my home. Honestly, from the same place where I was last Easter, in front of a silk piece of art entitled Windows and Doors. I love it because it has some really specific details and also a big, bold message of color. I decided to return to this spot because I needed something that felt familiar but also because Easter this year, it taught me how many doors and windows open and close and how we see things differently, how the new life of Easter continues even in the most unexpected of ways. The scripture you'll hear today also reflects that and I'm excited to share with you about it. Let me say just a few more things. One, just in front of me, is this candle. A group of you sent it to me, and it says, simply thinking of you. And St. Peter's, I've been thinking of you a lot. This has not been an easy adventure, but you have responded with grace and love and compassion and my intention is to do the same when I can return among you fully. I've been thinking of you and the ways that you give of yourselves, the ways that we are trying to get back into in-person worship, the ways that you are pouring yourselves into spiritual life experiences and trying to figure out how to do a mission trip this summer and trying to figure out how to spread the love that we know to be true on our grounds and in our hearts and in relationships. It's been really interesting. You come to me in dreams and I think about all of you who I've never met because Easter is new life and there is new life in this online worshiping community. So let's just pause and think about the windows and the doors Let's pause and think about that image that you saw right at the beginning of worship, the cross with the heart around it. It chose that because to me, that's Easter. There are doors of love that are opening. There are windows of justice that we must look through. And we do that best when we work together. Let me also say this. It's not been an easy week. Another black person was killed at the hands of police. A trial continues. A virus takes lives. Vaccines are doubted. And there is just a general sense of mistrust that I find to be really challenging. And yet, and yet, Easter still happened. Even after being hospitalized, I experienced Easter from my couch. 
I experienced Easter in all these tiny miracles. And I think that Easter is indeed that cross and that heart wrapped together right next to our covenant of welcome. So let's lean into that on this day. Let's lean into our truths that all are welcome and affirmed just as they are. Some of us, probably all of us, are not 100%. I'm not. I'm not there yet, and it frustrates me, and it's good to be together. So happy Easter. Let's just think of the doors and the windows, the love and the justice, the inclusion and the goodness that comes when we continue to be the body of Christ in this world. I'm thinking of you. I feel the connection. I'm grateful that we can be together today in a spirit of doing things just a little differently. Let's worship. Scripture for today is Luke 24, verses 36 through 48. While they were still talking about this, Jesus actually stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. In their panic and fright, they thought they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you disturbed? Why do such ideas cross your mind? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, really. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as I do. After saying this, Jesus showed them the wounds. They were still incredulous for sheer joy and wonder. So Jesus said to them, Do you have anything here to eat? After being given a piece of cooked fish, the Savior ate in their presence. Then Jesus said to them, Remember the words I spoke when I was still with you? Everything written about me in the Law of Moses and the Prophets and the Psalms had to be fulfilled. Then Jesus opened their minds to the understanding of the scriptures, saying, That is why the scriptures say that the Messiah must suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. In the Messiah's name, repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witness to all of this.
you've heard the scripture and you've listened to music that hopefully helped you expand your insights to that scripture. And you also saw some images of that scripture, which hopefully brought it to life a little bit. When we work all of our senses, somehow we learn more. The doors and the windows to our hearts and our minds and our spirits and our souls are opened. And that's my hope for this reflection today. It's a pretty simple premise I have. I want to offer a few details and then a big picture about this scripture. And the few details come right from the verses. So I'm gonna dive right into that. The scripture begins with this statement, while they were still talking about this. What did they mean? Well, this was the resurrection. They were still talking about Easter. I wonder if you're still talking about Easter. Because it makes a difference. If Easter is just one day, why bother? I mean, what would it feel like if you talked about Easter, the new life, the new adventures that are coming more than just on that day? I'm pretty sure that's why the author wrote it in that way, because Easter is indeed a season. We've got a number of more weeks of Easter, and I urge you to stay with it. The next detail that I think is important is that Jesus comes to be among the disciples and says, peace be with you. Now that sounds kind of standard, except I wonder why Jesus said that. I started to wonder, were they at odds with one another? Did he walk into a room in which there was all sorts of angst and anger, and were they having trouble being together, and that's why he said, peace be with you? Or is that just one of those throwaway, hey, how are you? And I'm not exactly sure, but I do think it's important to think about how we greet one another, and maybe that's why this detail is in that text. Think about why you greet people in the way that you do, and think about what that statement, peace be with you, might mean for you. As a personal reality, I will say that when people have said to me, find peace in my recovery, it's meant a lot. And it's meant I've had to push away a lot of things, and I've had to settle all of the anxiety and the frustration and the fear, and I've had to hold on to peace. But it's really been important. I've used that one line, peace be with you, as a meditation a lot in recent weeks. I breathe in and say, peace be with me. Peace be with them. Maybe that's enough. It's a detail, but maybe it's enough. Third little detail, the disciples almost immediately go back to panic and fear, we are told, and fright, and they wonder if they've seen a ghost. (laughs) And then Jesus puts that to rest by saying, give me something to eat. And he eats boiled fish with them. It would have been the most typical thing ever to just pick up a piece of boiled fish and eat it. It proved that he was who he was. And so the reason that I like this detail right now in this story is because it says to me, how are you going to keep life real? What's the equivalent of eating boiled fish for you? How are you going to share with others that you're for real, that you are who you are? And sometimes the simple things are the best. We've noticed that just lighting a candle at dinner time helps us center ourselves, just ground us and take a deep breath. I've noticed that if I let our dog out in the morning and I just allow the fresh air to fill my lungs, it's a moment of centering that keeps it real. I think that's one of the details of this story. And maybe for you, it's a cup of coffee. Maybe for you, it's drawing a picture. Maybe it's just saying your name as you wake up in the morning. I don't know. But there's a detail in this scripture that says, let's keep it real. And Jesus does it by eating boiled fish 
and you might do it in another way. After that incident, Jesus says, remember my words from before. And this is where the scripture got real for me, because I had to think about what Jesus's words were before. And Jesus's words were indeed words of inclusion and love and pushing the boundaries. And that made me think, what are St. Peter's words from before? And before might be before pandemic, before might be a few years ago, before might be, I don't know, but what is our focus? And it got me to thinking and realizing that our words are indeed, that all are welcome and affirmed. Our words are that questions matter more than answers. Our words are, the least among us need to be recognized and loved and cherished. That hasn't changed. Maybe our format of worship has changed. Maybe some of the things we can do because of all of these restrictions have changed, but our words from before have not changed. That really felt good to me, to see that detail, to see that Jesus says, my words from before need to be remembered. St. Peter's, our words need to be remembered, and more so than that, our actions need to be remembered and reflective of those words. Holding on to that, Jesus then, we are told, opened their minds to suffering and the rising from the dead. The interesting part about that to me is that Jesus had to open their minds. It wasn't easy. It didn't just all fall into place. Their minds had to be opened, and to open is to change. I wonder what we need to change. And in fact, I wonder what do we need to suffer through because that's what happens in that little detail of the story as Jesus reminded him, them of the suffering. I wonder if we're willing to suffer. I wonder if I'm willing to suffer. What am I willing to do differently to give up, to lose? What am I willing to be uncomfortable about? Because this little detail in the story is about just that. And the final detail that I will take note of is that Jesus then says, you are witnesses to all of this. Meaning, you're seeing something that matters. And that got me to thinking, what am I seeing? What am I a witness to? Now again, if I go super personal, I am witness right now to the reality that rest matters and recovery takes longer than we think it does. I don't love having to rest. I don't love having to stay down as much as I am. But it matters. And so we sit in that really uncomfortable place and we realize just how much we change as a result. And that's what brings me to the big picture the big picture of the scripture and the big picture of our lives together, I really feel that this scripture is about two things. One, there's no going back. Jesus cannot go back to before the crucifixion and the resurrection. The disciples cannot go back. And quite frankly, we can't go back either you hear it all over the place right now, particularly in church circles, but other circles as well. I just want to go back to when. And when we go back to worship, I feel that longing. I totally feel it. But if I live into this scripture, if I lean into this scripture, I realize that there is no going back because it will be different. And I think Jesus was helping the disciples and now us to see that. Nothing that happened in that room was comfortable. The eating of the boiled fish, the fright, the ghost, none of that was comfortable. Jesus's words weren't comfortable. 
This is a story of being uncomfortable. And I think it's uncomfortable in the most spiritually grounded of ways. My confession to you is that as I've been pondering these past few weeks and literally been held down and told that I could not move, I realize that discomfort really puts us in a different place. And I think, and it's not going to be a popular opinion, that faith should be uncomfortable. I don't think that the experience of church should only be fill me up and make me feel good. I actually think that we will thrive as a congregation if we can embrace some discomfort. If we can be honest with one another and say our lives together aren't going to feel like they used to and maybe that's good. I need you to know that my dog is now lying on my feet because she can feel the energy and my own anxiety in even saying this. But this is what's on my heart. It's time for us to get uncomfortable. It's time for us to be real about all the work that needs to be done. It's time for us to recognize that, yes, being together is our goal. And I am delighted to report that a live stream team is up and running. We have equipment purchased. We are getting closer and closer to being in our building. But let's go back to what Jesus said. Remember my words from before. Our focus will be welcome and inclusion. Our focus will be safety for the least among us. And at the beginning of the pandemic, the least among us were our elders. And as we near an ending point, if you will, of this pandemic, some of the least among us are the youngest among us. We are getting closer, St. Peter's. And we are not quite there yet. I have to tell you, it's made me nervous when people have said to me, well, I'm vaccinated, so I'm fine, let's go back. And this is gonna sound harsh, because it is, but it's not all about you. It never has been. Our focus as a community has always been on the other. And so while I delight in every vaccine that we can get into people, I also recognize that we need a tiny bit more time to allow that process to play out. We are hoping to be in person in the next couple of months. We've got a couple of experiments coming up with live stream. We've got plans that are in the works and it's going to be uncomfortable because we can't go back to just being the in-person congregation that we once were. We have gained way too much with all of you whom we've never met in real life. You are a worshiping community online and we are better for it. So I'm here to tell you that while it's uncomfortable, this isn't going away. We're not going to cut off our online community because you have changed us. And quite frankly, it's not even an us and you or them and me. It's a we. And we at St. Peter's know the value of inclusion. We know the beauty of being stretched a little differently. We know what it means to keep it real. I think that's what was happening in that room when Jesus came and the people were scared. I'm scared. I'm not I'm scared. Because it's not going to feel the same when we go back. But I'm trusting that in some ways it will feel even better because we know what we've lost. And we know in some ways what we can gain. So I'm asking you boldly to embrace the idea that peace be with you. That we need to hear that from Jesus and from ourselves. I'm asking you to be uncomfortable, to put yourself aside a little bit and think of the others who need to be brought in. We are so close, St. Peter's. 
Jesus was right there with them and he kept it real. So I'm going to ask that each of us try to do the same. Think about what you're willing to suffer with, what you're willing to let go of, and then think about what you've gained. I am not thrilled that I've had to stay low for so many weeks, but I've gained a perspective and some energy and focus. And there's some stuff I'm letting go of and there's some parts of me you might not recognize, and I'm okay with that. There's probably parts of me that you're not gonna love. I'm okay with that too, because in my conversations with God, it's been really real that my recovery matters, that to be strong is sometimes to let go, and that to receive care is often more important than giving it. That's what Jesus did in that room. He showed up, he made people a little bit uncomfortable, and then he oriented them to something totally new. I can't wait. So join me as we continue this journey, as we continue to broaden our circles, as we continue to push towards being together and being healthier and sharing a message of love and inclusion and change because this world it could stand to be a little less comfortable and a bit more transformed there are doors and windows opening all around us and i look forward to sharing the journey with each of you god in your many names amen As we pause to pray, maybe you'll get lost in this candle. Maybe you'll get lost in this art. Maybe you'll just close your eyes and be lost in the wanderings of your mind. Wherever you find yourself, know that you are loved, that your prayers matter even if the words don't come, and that indeed God journeys with us as our hearts are connected. Let us pray. Peace be with you, Jesus says. 
And God, we are longing for that peace with one another. In a world that feels overwhelmed with grief and decisions and injustices, in a world that continues to challenge us, remind us that there is peace. For the ups and downs of life, for the illnesses that give us perspective and the caregivers that give us love, we pray. For the headlines that cause us to take pause, for the ones that make our stomachs churn, for the tears that are shed because it really shouldn't be like this. God, we offer a pause. We take a deep breath. We imagine you wrapping us in love. And we confess, we don't always know what to say or do. God, in those moments, in these moments, help us to stay present calm our fears that we're not doing it right or enough. Show us that sometimes it just can't be any quicker. Remind us that every little step matters. Temper our privilege when we want to fix everything without listening. God, remind us that we aren't always the fixers, but we can be the ones who love. And through loving, maybe we will be able to fix a little bit of something. Maybe we'll be able to hold on and to let go. Maybe we'll be able to stand with another or just sit with them as they cry. God, help me. Help each of us to be thinking beyond what we have known. Help us to welcome a bit of discomfort, maybe a lot of discomfort. Teach us to embrace what is unsettled, not because we need to stay mired in the muck, but because we desperately need to change in order to share your words, your love, your power and grace. God, we are humbled by all of the wonderings of this world. We give thanks for the creatures who nudge us, the people who care for us, the earth that literally holds us. And we pray that we might be able to find a way to give back to be real, to share life fully. Honoring the mystery of Easter. Maybe still a bit confused about what happened and what didn't. Checking in with our bodies and releasing the tension that we hold. We open our hearts to new understanding as we pray together, our Creator God, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Sing to God a hymn.
Go forth into this world, maybe a little less comfortable, but grounded in the stories of faith that challenge and change and inspire us. Jesus came to be among the disciples when they were scared. I've been scared recently. Maybe you have too, or maybe not. Be open to what is coming next and know that there's no going back. The change is for real, and it's gonna be really good. With the blessings of God, our Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit, may the doors and the windows of love and justice be thrown open, and may we adventure through them together. Amen.